we're jumping into our first segment, and we're here joined with Belizean American actor Kara Young and discussing the Broadway show Clyde and her nomination for Best Featured Actor at the Tony Awards. So good morning, Miss Young. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to our screen. We can't say couch, but welcome to our screen. <laughs> uh, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for having me this morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. I'm a little sleepy, but I I'm good. <laughs> we got you up early. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thank you for making the time. Don't apologize. Don't apologize at all. No, of course. I would have made it if it was like 5 o'clock in the morning. You know? <laughs> all right. So, Kara, could you tell us more about Clyde? What is Clyde about? Yeah. So, Clyde is uh, about... Clyde's written by Lynn Nottage, directed by Kate Risky. Lynn Nottage is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning playwright. Um, uh, and Clyde's is about a is, a, is a sandwich shop, and it's run by Clyde Uzo Aduba. Um, and it basically hires formerly incarcerated people um, for, for, for jobs, for it, in a sam making sandwiches. Um, and I play Letitia, who is um, a mother of a sick child and she is at Clyde's re-entering society. So she's really sort of um, most definitely owning her, 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 her creativity at this place. And, you know, every single time she faces the world, that's a different story. But here she has a place of of meditation, of, of, creative, of, of creative output. Um, yeah, so Clyde's is about many things, actually. I mean, it's, it, we can have a whole dissertation on Clyde's because uh, Lynn Nottage's pen is that real. So, let's, uh, I nearly call you Letitia. <laughs> but Cara, uh, um, okay, so you're playing a, a formerly incarcerated woman. Could you tell us more about what it took to, to to get into portray that role. exactly that character there, especially along with a sick child, as you mentioned. Yeah, um, you know, I feel like all of my character, all of the characters that I have the honor and privilege of uh, stepping into their shoes, uh, you know, I, my hope and my desires are to honor this human as best as possible. And that means that the work never stops. So, you know, to really talk about embodying character, I, 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 I try to do all the work and then just trust that, that the spirit of, of the character will, 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 sh will show up, you know? Um, but the work really includes, like, just lots of research, you know? Uh, you know, even thinking about, like, what, you know, what her first birthday might have been like or not, you know? It... it and I, and I almost feel like, um, you know, this is the kind of work that just, it's never ending because, you know, we are so, comp as humans, we're so complicated. And if we were like to only begin to unpack what we are, you know, what the things that have happened to us, the things that we've experienced out throughout life, we, we will be... We will be trying to write forever, you know? So it's just really trying to honor someone as best as possible. Um, and doing all of the work necessary to 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 get there and hope hopefully to get there, you know. Definitely, I want to ask. You know, you've mentioned something that is important. Every time, every role that you get, you try your best to honor that human being. So, can you tell us about mm -hmm. the journey that you've had? You know, being an actress, being in theater, being you know in in drama. Just the idea of like, how did it start? Where was it? Was it like you watched a movie and they're like, I want to do that? What? What was the journey like to get you to this point? Um, so, you know, this it's it's such it's so weird because it's like it's not that the answer changes, but it's like it's like you know one thing has to happen in order for the other thing to happen. You know, you have to sort of experience certain things in order to experience like like every like we all know, you know. Um, anyway, oh, I'm seeing footage that I've never seen before. Um, <laughs> Because I, yeah, I think that's probably from a copy online that, okay. Um, anyway, so um, the, 
the journey to get there, uh, I think it was just inspiration. You know, I think like I've always been a part of the extracurricular uh, uh, and a uh, part of the arts as a child. Um, I, I was a mime when I was five and I took that class because my brother was taking mime and I decided that, you know, I really wanted to follow behind my brother's footsteps and probably for a place of comfort, you know, as a as a way of comfort. And in 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 return, the, the woman who was the instructor, the teacher, she really nurtured me. She really took care of me. And I guess she saw something inside of me that I I hadn't seen, but really uh, activated my imagination and uh, made me fall in love with performance in a way. You know, I had always been doing dance and things of that nature. So I've always been a part of the arts, but I think performing in this way, acting without words, uh, was something that I, I just I just didn't know I had inside of me. And from that point on, I feel like there was something that was there, but I didn't know that I was gonna do this until I went away to school um, and I did an improv class. It was me and another young woman um, and we were given, we were given this instruction to improv this, this, this scene, you know, it was our creation. And when we performed it, um, we, we, the, the, the rules were to like to perform with the same plot points that you like improv and that came, that you came up with. And when we performed it and we looked up, like everybody was bawling, everybody was like bawling. And we were like, we were shocked. Wow. We were in we were like, we were like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, what do we, what do we do? You know, what do we do? You know, but like in return, like I really, at that moment, I was really like, oh, oh, this is, this is something that I can do. Wow. Like the, the feeling of like, and it wasn't about power. It wasn't about ego. It was about we can like we can change people it's it's you know? literal it's literal inspiration yeah i could imagine you're portraying there that's like so beautiful <laughs> and so now all this work has gotten you to a nomination for a tony how does that feel oh man you know i keep on being asked that question and i keep on saying that the feelings are evolving at every single moment um yeah, I, I, I'm grateful. I think at the core of it, it's like super gratitude. You know, I didn't expect any of this. And I think that I just didn't expect any of it. And it's really lovely to be acknowledged in this way. Um, and, and I've been saying it's really, really wonderful for Letitia to be acknowledged and women, women like Letitia, you know, yes. to be acknowledged. Women who are... Incar women who are, are incarcerated, formerly incarcerated, black women who are incarcerated, black mothers who are incarcerated, black mothers with sick children who are incarcerated, black fathers who are incarcerated, black single fathers who are incarcerated. You know what I mean? Like, the, I think like the, 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 the acknowledgement is, is not, it's bigger than me. Um, so it feels, if I'm, I'm grateful for it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, I can tell, you know, it's like you said, the feelings are evolving, but I can see, you know, how much this means to you and what it means to other people around because you, you represent more than just yourself. And so that's the impact that I see coming from this nomination. I want to ask, when it comes to the hardships to get to this point, go, I know you mentioned like the inspiration of not even knowing that you could do something like this at first and then knowing that you can, seeing people cry and be like, wow, this is something you can do. So can you tell us about the hardships that you've, encountered you know how have you overcome things in your life when it comes to your career um you know i will say like this is a challenging industry for sure but i think that when i got old so you know it's it's so weird i've I, my journey is so is 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 quite an interesting path because it was challenging it was you know difficult at times i did you know face like Lots of ugh moments, you <laughs> yeah. know, but but like everybody does. Definitely. You know, like and no matter what we just 
Are y'all hearing me clearly? Because I'm yes. like, yes, I yes, mean, we're no, hearing we're loud and clear. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I was like, did I hook up my mic right or whatever? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I just feel like every industry is so, pardon me, every industry is challenging. Every industry, you know, if you want to do your best, it's challenging, you know? And I think, like, what changed for me along the path was, like, at the beginning, like, all things, they seem really pretty, right? Like, oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, my God, I want to, I want to, you know, I, I can't wait to lie, you know? And, and in return, you're like, oh, no, you got to do the work. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you got to do the work. You got to do the work. You got to be the work. You got to, you know, find something bigger than yourself. I mean, and I'm saying you, but I'm talking to myself. Like, I'm still talking to myself as I'm saying this, you know, not to anybody in particular. Right, right. I just feel like the being an artist is, is, is forever. And so it's your, it, the work is never over. Car um, so... I, I want to ask, and I want to circle back on the, the, the character of Letitia. Um, she's a, she was an incarcerated woman now, and you had this time of, of being able to portray her. Would you say that uh, it has no, not enlightened, but basically enlightened or has, has created, a spark. created a spark to you to you know, aid in any way persons of that description? Um, wait, can you say that one more time, the, the last part of that question? Uh, would, it, would you say that it created a spark in you to be an advocate or to, to, to help persons of that description of being previously incarcerated? Trying you know, to find we, their social status back in, well, society. Well, you know, we're talking about capitalism at its core, you know? Um... So, like, re-entering society is something that, soci like, society makes it very hard to do. Um, so that's, like, number one. Okay. Right? As you know, and, I, and, the, and then, I mean, I feel like I'm not about to answer this question the way that you asked it, but, <laughs> but <laughs> so my apologies in advance. Um, but I feel like, I feel like, like we're, man, like the human, the human spirit is resilient. Right. You know, Letitia, again, like I said, like there, there's so much work to be done, like just not, not peeling apart per se, but, 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 but painting, painting her canvas. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm sorry, I kind of got a little un unfocused because I started thinking about Letitia. That's not a problem. In such a, in such a like a, a, in a, in a very spiritual way. I, the reason I asked it because we here in Belize sometimes, well, it's it's all over the world as well, but we have uh, previously incarcerated persons coming out, and you know mm -hmm. they're trying to fit back into society, it's but hard. it is a hard uphill battle for those persons, um, right. especially if it was something done. 20, 50, 50 years ago, I'm just saying. Um, society paints, especially in a small community or a small country like Belize, um, uh -huh. society paints you red completely. So right. it, I could imagine the, 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 in your case study, in your depiction of Letitia, what all that must have entailed. So that's where that question came from. Well, you know, from. well, the thing about it is, is that we, 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 we talk about that, but then we, we, we should talk about, like, the way that the prison industrial complex is, like, designed to, to uh, uh, imprison a certain kind of person and a, and, a, and, a, and a certain group of people. And so in America, you know, we're talking about brown and black people and the way that they the way that the prison industrial complex targets our backs in particular. And that's why I said that capitalism is at the uh. forefront of all of that. And, and I think that, you know, we talk about when people re-entering society, they, 
they actually make it impossible for people to re-enter society. Indeed. And I, I think it's, it's, I think it's, I think they, they make it impossible for people to exist in society. I mean, if you were to go to, for example, if you were to try to go get food stamps, you go to the food stamp office and then you get there and then they're like, oh no, you need this, 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 and this, and you can't get this until you get that. And then you got to go back. You know what I'm saying? They actually yes. make it impossible for people to survive. And they give people the absolute minimum. I mean, we're talking about, we're also talking about a woman with a sick child who stole seizure medication for her sick daughter. Why does she have to be in that predicament? We're talking about a bro broken healthcare system. We're talking about like at capitalism at its core. And it only right. protects a few. Mm -hmm. And so why does it only protect a few? Now you're talking about people in Belize re-entering society after incarceration. We need to reform the prison industrial complex glo globally, you know, and especially in certain parts of this uh, parts of the world. So it's like, why are we making it hard for people to rehab into the society that we've created to continue to keep them out of? That is so true. That is so true. So uh, words are so powerful. Yeah. Definitely. Speaking, of, well, we're while we're here on the topic of incarceration and Belize. I've, more focusing on Belize now. Um, mm. Let's let's hear about what what experiences. What what do you know about Belize? I know your father uh, migrated from Belize as a young child. Um, mm -hmm. What could you tell us about your experiences in Belize, if any? Um, I grew I grew up going to Belize. I grew up going to Belize every summer. I really do feel like Belize is my second home, if not like my spiritual ancestral home. You know. Um, I feel super at peace. You know, I'm from the, I'm from New York. I'm from the concrete jungle. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> like, like facts. You know, so like this is like a, a you just going going from city life, or you know, super urban city life to 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 nature. Um, I, I feel very much a part of nature. You know, as a Caribbean child, um, both of my parents are from Belize. I'm the I am. Um, my mother is Vanessa Jenkins Young and my father is Clay Young. And uh, I have lots of beautiful, incredible roots in Belize. Um, and my experiences in Belize have always been beautiful. So like, I, I always look forward to going back. I, I always look forward to, to being there um, for sure. Yeah, that's my dad. I Aww. Aww. <laughs> that's, that's Lynn Nottage taking a picture of me and my father at the Tony's luncheon the other day, oh, wow. which was so, which is so magical because my father works at the Rainbow Room and the Tony's luncheon was at the Rainbow Room. And, and when we were there, I don't know if you guys heard about this moment, but when we were there, um, they were naming the nominees uh, per category. And when they got to me, they named me and I received my plaque. And then Emilio Sosa, who was naming the nominees, who's one of the chair people of the American Theater Wing, decided, excuse me, he said um, he, he was talking about coming to rehearsal and that this gentleman was beaming with pride. This gentleman was beaming with pride and said that his daughter was nominated for a Tony and his name was Clay Young. And my father came out and the entire room gave him a standing ovation. Aww. And it was like, it was like one of those magical New York moments. Cause I had like been growing, I grew up going to the rainbow room too. You know, my father's been there for 30 years. So it was like a full circle moment that people, um, there's an article in the New York times about it now. And People are texting me, messaging me, saying they're so emotional um, by this by this moment, um, which is which is a very magical, magical, magical moment. Indeed, I mean, I mean, to also be featured in the New York Times is magical moment. It's a it's a moment in history, really, not only for you, but for but your father, for your father, all and the for hard Belize work that he's been as well. doing to as well. So to be able to just to share that moment with you, because we know how the limitation of invitations when it comes to these awards too as well so to have him in the room to be able to share that i moment, know it's just i can't yeah. even imagine it for you so i can tell it you can see you beaming with the happiness right now because like you're reliving that amazing moment so yes we have the article up here so people can be able to check it out it's just it's oh wow man you can i know see the happiness so captured there <laughs> It really, honestly, it really, when looking back at this moment, it just really, really like, wow, magic is real. <laughs> You're like, oh, it's so, this, this is, 
those little magical moments, you know, they're just so, man, you can't recreate it. You, it's almost like you had to be there to experience it. But, yes, definitely. But at the same time, but at the same time, uh, I think Michael Paulson, the journalist, really captures the true essence of that moment, even he though did. he wasn't even there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it goes to show as well how hard work and determination gets you and affords you these magical moments like this. This is one, it's just, this is a grand one. Like you said, it's just pure magic here. Um, Aww. So, yeah, we're so I mean, happy for you and we're yes. so proud of you as well. Your father to the whole thing. I'm so happy to find out that you came, you come to Belize on your summers when you were younger and everything. Mm -hmm. I, I gotta ask though, <laughs> do you know any Creole words? Yo! I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, of okay, course but... I do. But wait, 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 wait. First of all, all I right. grew up in a very, a very, very, very um, Creole household. So I grew up speaking Creole. I mean, you know, and it's weird because you go to Belize sometimes and people and your cousins are like, you don't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> sound, you sound stupid. I just see how you put it up on me so perfect it. just now. You know? I love it. Yeah, I love it for you. I love it. I love the accent just bust out just now. <laughs> but I'm saying, I mean, you know, it's funny because I feel like my, I feel like there's always a, a, a competitive thing with that. You know, like a competitive, like, you know, you are American, but like, can you speak it? Like, can you fool people? You know? <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, but I do the same thing to my cousins over there too. You so, do? <laughs> yes. Of course. Of course. It's just so natural. It's so natural. But you know, it's weird because... I think that it's like kind of a beautiful, it's kind of a beautiful thing, you know, like you, you feel I'm like, I'm super Harlem. Like, first of all, like I'm a super New York, you know what I mean? Like I'm so, I'm so New York and like sometimes like I'm really, you know, I'm. I, you know, just just to continue with the, the magic, um, somebody's in our, in our comment section right now saying how they actually went to primary school with your mom. And oh, my mom was her. queen of... My mom was queen of the Bay in 1977. Oh, there we go. Big up. <laughs> ah, Vanessa, Vanessa Jenkins and my, and, my, and my auntie, Diana Jenkins, is queen of the Bay in 1982. Girl, you have queen of the Bay running through your veins. I it's love it. It's wild, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. This conversation is so wholesome. It's so... Yes. Kara, all right, so... Yes. We... Love your work. We, we congratulate you again for your nominations. Is there any words that you would like to share with our young Belizean population as to how to get where you are or to your, your rights, no? Oh, you know, I, I, you know, I really, so I really don't have advice. I keep on saying that and people get, are, are a little upset with me for saying like, I don't have advice. I really don't. I feel like everybody's path is their own. You know, am I frozen? Damn. Yeah, you look I feel like everybody. <laughs> I look, <laughs> look at that. All right, there okay, you go. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I feel like everybody's path is their own. And I feel like everyone needs to honor their path and honor the things that, the things that mean something to them, right? And honor their imaginations, honor their dreams, honor, honor the, the deepest part of themselves. Right. Yes. And I think that this this journey as an artist, I will say this, the journey as an artist is to really constantly reflect on humanity for me, for me, is to constantly reflect on humanity as this vessel, as this black vessel, reflect on black humanity and really. Uh, I want you to see us. Right. I want you to see me. I want you to see not me, but but the women who look like me or the non-binary people who look like me. I want you to see the African people who look like me and see us for all of our levels and all of our, and all of our, all of our complexities. Yes. You know, we are so infinite as African people. We are so infinite, right? And I think like my, my uh, again, no advice, but... <laughs> To continue to to continue to to dig deep into yourself because our contribution on the earth as humans, like if we wake up every day, like y'all woke up this morning 
and, and showed up to your jobs. And not only showed up to your jobs, but you showed up to your jobs for the people, right? It's about the people. It's bigger than yourselves, you know? And we have to show up for everybody. <laughs> we got to show up. Right. Thank we got to wake so up much, and show up. And thank you for showing up for us. And I can't even imagine what your career is going to be taking you after this, how amazing it's going to be. Make sure you share all the highlights with us. If anytime you come back to Blaze and you want to be on the show, let us know the seat. The couch here is ready. We're going to kick Brandon out of this side and put him on the <laughs> other side so you can be able to have the nice green couch. It's earthy, so you're going to feel at home because we know you like the nature. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you again, Kara, for being here with us this morning. But we also have a little surprise for you. So, guys, if we could bring that up. Bring up the picture! There we hey! go! <laughs> that's your mama! Hey, that's my mom! How fabulous! Look how gorgeous she looks. I love that outfit. Vanessa Jenkins, 1977! There Woo! we go. Put some respect on that name. <laughs> Put some respect beautiful. on yeah. that name. That's so beautiful. But again, Kara. Yes, that, uh huh. Go Sorry. ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to shout out my, my, my auntie, Diana Jenkins. I think I did that already. Please do Please shout do. out. If I said her name. <laughs> but yes, Diana Jenkins is now Diana Fuller. Yes, 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 yes. No, we're so happy. Shout out to all the Jenkins out there. Thank you so much and, for gracing and us. And the Youngs. And Big the Youngs. Young. Oh, yes, the Youngs. Birds Oh, yes. all right, there we go. <laughs> I know the young some birds out. <laughs> I love it for she, though. I love it for she. Yes, thank you, Kara, for being here. And for all the essence, the, the love, I can like totally feel your energy, and I'm so happy to be able to have you here virtually. Hoping to get you here physically. We're going to make you dance, and everything's going to be a whole vibe, because we punta love to have a good... Oh, you know for I... punta? I, what? You know for punta? <laughs> Jenkins, Jenkins of Adong South, yes? Girl, you're talking to her, but we're not see it yet. So, okay, we are, that's well, going to be our challenge. You know, we're going to have to we gonna have to wait for that one, but it's going to happen. <laughs> you're going to have to work for that one. We're going to see what happens when it oh. comes on. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much, and blessings upon blessings on your career and your journey for your father, your own your entire family. Can't wait for you to be back to Belize. And remember, we're ready for y'all, for the punta, for every single thing. It's going to be a great vibe. Oh, blessings to you guys. Blessings, blessings, blessings. And thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for having me on this morning. Thank you for asking me to be, to, to talk this morning. I am so grateful and, 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 and just thank you. No problem at all. All the best in Cairo.